Lori and welcome to the channel. In today's editing video, I wanted to show you how I took this image from what I call crunchy or a little bit, um, it, it just looks like a snapshot to me. And what I wanted to do was create more of a painted, soft, beautiful dahlia image. So often when you're shooting an image that has so much texture and detail and so many petals and such a bright magenta color, it can come out looking um, a, what I call a little bit crunchy. Now I did shoot this at f4.0, so I was expecting it to be a little bit softer on the outside with my spot focus here on the center. But due to the details, due to the color, it just really came out to me um, a little bit more like something I took on my, my cell phone. And so what I wanted to do was give it a softer look um, and really work on it. To do that, I decided to start with some basic edits here in Lightroom. So I'll take you back to the import. This was the original image. So it was just a straight on shot. I only took one shot of this flower and I really didn't love it in camera. And so I actually moved on. I wish I'd played with it a little bit more, but I think we can save this image as you saw with the after image. So let me walk you through what I decided to do. First thing is I went ahead and did a crop. I think looking at a fill your frame as a square works really nice and it reduces that elongated look. So I think a square crop works really nice. So we'll go back up to that. Next, I worked on the basic panel. So if we go up, you'll be able to see over here on the left, I reduced the highlights, opened up the shadows a little bit. So again, before and after, just opening up those shadows in these dark areas really worked nice. Next, I actually did a tone curve. So I went in and brightened the highlights. Even though I brought them down, I selected the area that I wanted to brighten. So that's really brightening the center of the flower. So I used the tone curve to help with that. And then I did some color adjustments. So the red and magenta were just a little bit too bright for my taste and the way I wanted this image to look. So I just reduced those negative nine and negative 14. At this point, this is where I was really stuck with this image. And I just felt like I needed to take it into Topaz and add some softening. Now I could have done it in Photoshop, but I think the tools in Topaz Studio 2 work really nice. So let's go over to Topaz together and I'm going to recreate this for you. So let's edit in Topaz Studio 2. If you're not familiar, Topaz is a standalone program. It does work as a plugin with Lightroom or Photoshop and it is a creative editing program. So it is made for adding blur, adding painting techniques. It does a lot of fun things. So we're going to jump in and play with several options to transform this image. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is add filter and I want to immediately blur the edges of the flower. So we're going to come in with a Gaussian blur and I'm going to increase the amount. I want to still preserve the detail, but add that softness. So we're going to go ahead and blur that just a little bit. Now, the beauty of Topaz is we have the mask available. Now I'm going to go ahead and do a spot mask. This is going to allow me to soften that blur so that it just kind of fades out naturally. You could also use the brush, but I like to use um, this tool. OK, so we can see the effect here. I'm going to click the X to close that out. So now you can see before and after. We've just softened those edges, but I want to soften them even more. All right, so next let's go down and we're going to add my favorite feature glow. I'm going to come down and take that to about 40. I'm going to reduce the opacity just a little bit. There we go. Look at that softness. Look at before and after. Now we want to mask that as well, but this time I'm going to use the brush. So first, let's raise the radius a little bit. I'm going to brush it off the center. And then I'm just going to kind of fan it out a little bit. And then I'm going to take my brush to 50%. So what this is going to do is as I brush it out, it's only reducing or bringing out what's underneath, which is my original image, at about 50%. So I'm just fanning out that glow to make it really nice and soft. 
All right, the next thing I wanna do is come in and under Add Filter, we did the focal blur before. I wanna also go down and do a smudge technique. So we're gonna go down to Smudge, and I'm gonna increase the strength, and you can see how that gives it some additional softness. Now I can turn it on and off here so you can see. This is without the smudge and this is with it. It's gonna be very subtle, but I do like to layer these. So let's go ahead and leave that on. And what I wanna do is grab and I'm gonna use the brush again. And I want to just remove it from the center. And I think again, I'm gonna take it to 50% and just kind of brush it off the petals. I like smudge because it does give some definition. So it's kind of bringing a little bit of detail out in the flowers, but also keeping some of that softness. And we can um, take it all the way up. If we want to add a little bit of that back, I may just selectively come in and add a little bit of that feature. Now, what's great in Topaz, at any point, you can come and adjust the opacity. So if you want to try a little less of something, you can come in and change that. All right, so we're gonna bring that down. Now, the next thing that I was thinking about with this image is I really don't like the green sections that are popping out. I think with a fill your frame like this, I would love to see it completely filled in. So instead of going back to Lightroom or even Photoshop, I am going to use the heel option right here in the program. And I am just gonna slide over these areas. And because I am covering a little bit of the pixels of the pink, you're gonna see it's gonna fill in really nicely. So we're gonna come in, and if there's an area you don't like, you can go back over it, or you can always undo. So sometimes I'll go back over it a couple times, and sometimes I undo. So in this case, I'm gonna go back a couple steps, and I'm gonna make the brush a little bit smaller, and then come back in with this. Let's get the brush. Don't want it too big and not too small. So that's a little bit tricky sometimes. Okay. Mm, I'm still not liking that one. So let's just undo and let's get that brush maybe right at a two and a half. That's gonna be better. Come in with that. There we go. I think that works and I can even come in and just kind of smooth that one section out. You can see if you get too much I would just go over it a couple times. Now I'm gonna make my brush smaller and just go over these lines and it should fill in really nicely. Now we are gonna do this and then we will get our finished, but then we're gonna also position this so that it's under some of our other um, softening blurs so that it's really, um, looks very natural. So you want it to look like you cloned the petals. All right, so I'm just gonna finish this up. Let's make the brush um, a little bit bigger. And that's too big. We'll Go over that section, let's see what it does. I think the brush is maybe too big, that's not bad. We'll Come back down to about three. And now we can do this section. This bottom section and then we've got the top. So Topaz does a nice job with the heel tool. It, it works if you're going to have your image really soft and dreamy and painterly. If you want detail, I would definitely use Photoshop and use the options in there and probably use clone. And that corner looks pretty good. I'm just going to kind of come in and now what we can do, I could have done this first, but I didn't decide on it till last. So that's okay. Um, we still have that softness all around our image. So once we're done, I'm just going to make sure this corner's good. I'm going to click apply. And now what we can do is go ahead and add another blur if we want. So I'm actually going to use the blur option. We've got Gaussian and I'm going to come around and just add that blur. Actually, let's go back and I wanna do a focal blur. So let's go to add filter, focal blur. So I wanted to show you some different options. This one we can enlarge. 
and we've got the blur. It's doing a circular blur. And we can put it on a different blend mode if we want. So if you want it on lighten or darken, I usually just work with normal. So that's what I'm going to work with. And we can, let's see if it's going to allow us to position that blur. And now I'm going to mask it and we want to just invert it. And once it's inverted, I am going to grab the brush, take it all the way to white. And let's turn off this other blur. There we go. Now I can see the blur that we did. So let's go back, guys. I'm going to redo this for you because I messed up. I left that other blur on. Let's add and do our focal blur again. There we go, now it's working. So you come in, put that spot right in the center. You can adjust the circle. And as you come out, then you can change how much of the blur you want. So I'm just wanting to soften the edges where we did the heel. I think that looks really good. Maybe bring the opacity down. Maybe leave the opacity up, but let's make this circle a little bit bigger. I'm going to avoid those corners because that's where we did most of our heel work and stretch that out a little bit. And I think um, that is going to do it. So now if I press here is before, you can see how what I call crunchy this is, how it just um, doesn't give that soft kind of painted look. And I really just love the difference here. So at this point, I'm going to click Accept. The great thing about Topaz, it's going to bring this image right back into Lightroom for us. And here, I'm going to make a couple more adjustments. So I do want to grab the um, Heal tool here, and I'm going to make just a few changes using Lightroom's tool because I know, um, well, usually it works really nice. So let's let's work on that one just a little bit. I am going to work on just a few of these spots that seem a little bit distracting. So I'm just going to come in and this is not, it's not cooperating today. Let's keep the feather higher and let's actually try the remove tool and see if we have better luck. Hmm, not having good luck today with that. Yeah, let's undo those two. May have to take this into Photoshop, but just wanted to clean up that one petal. And yeah, it's um it's giving us a little bit of a hard time. May have to just go over it a couple times. All right, and then I just wanted to check the image for any other areas that are distracting, anything that you'd want to modify, maybe some of these bright spots. Yeah, just clean those up a little bit. Anything around the edges. And then the last thing I want to do is brighten this center. So I'm going to go ahead and do a mask grab the brush. Um, actually, I could, instead of the brush, I could also do objects, but we'll just go ahead and do the brush. We're going to come in and brush around the center of this flower. And what I like to do is go around that kind of center part. And I want to open up the shadows again, because we've done a lot of painting to this image. So I want to brighten up that center. And then I'm going to add just a little pop of exposure. You can also add a little bit of texture if you want to. If you really want to make that center pop, you can do that as well. And in this case, we could also try adding a little bit of the whites just to make that center. All right. And then from here, you are pretty much finished with this image. Now I can come down. I could play with the colors to tweak a little bit more if I wanted. May want to reduce that red. Um, I think it's okay. We could also reduce the luminance of the red. There we go. If you want it to be a little deeper and not as bright, you can see if we brighten it, what happens? Maybe leave it just a little positive on the red. Maybe take the magenta down. You just kind of can play with your colors to see what you like and what fits your image. Um, also, sometimes with magenta, you can work with the temperature slider. Adding a little bit more green is going to make it more pink. There we go, adding more magenta. 
and you can see blue is going to make it have more of that magenta and then golden. So just play with your white balance as well if you're working with a magenta colored flower. All right, everyone. So again, this was taking our image from the original, um, which was all the way back at this import. I would have thrown away this image, but I think painting with topaz and layering all of the fun features, the blurs, the glow, you could even done some impressionism on this. So many options to create a beautiful painted flower. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Please take a minute to click like, subscribe, send me some comments, and let me know what video you'd like me to create next. Thanks again.